I want to listen uh, a little bit too, not just talking. We really want to engage. Uh, Director Fordyce and I uh, have done this a number of times, sat down with uh, young agricultural uh, leaders and talked about kind of the future of agriculture in our state and what we can do to keep uh, improving. Uh, so, so two or three things real quickly. I'll turn it over to Richard, then we want to go around and then have a, have a discussion here. Um, first of all, I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell anybody here, but agriculture is the backbone of the economy of our state. So, so. It, from a from a mega position of looking at the entirety of the economy of the state, uh, it's just vitally important that we remain uh, agile, keep the investments going, and keep productivity uh, moving forward. The second piece is that it's 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 clearly uh, something where we have an international play. Uh, food is something everybody eats. Uh, the, the marketplace is a world marketplace for most of the most of the uh, things that come off the farms and. Uh, uh, although a lot of it's uh, eaten and, and used here. Uh, and contained within that is obviously a need to embrace technology and efficiency as we move forward to give more output. But the third and kind of specific problem that, that the director and I are going to be working on trying to solve deals with uh, the beef side of this equation. The state of Missouri has uh, about 1.7 million cows, number two cow-calf state in the country. Uh, we only finish and harvest about 75,000. So the other 1.62 million of them a year head to Colorado or, or Nebraska or somewhere else. And what that really means is financially over a billion dollars of value go somewhere else. Let's analogize it to corn. If we, were, if we did exactly with corn what we do with the vast majority of beef in Missouri, we'd raise it as soon as it tasseled. We did shovel, dig it up, put it in the back of a flatbed, and drive it to Colorado and let them grow it the rest of the way and get that profit off of it. Okay. So the problem we're looking at is how do we, in a, in a, in a, in a realistic, sensitive way, how do we finish more, how do we harvest more, and then how do we brand the differ the, the, both genetically and everything else outstanding products that can get a more significant premium for their for their for the amount of input and then also how do you get uh, in, in, in farming how can you get a, a more uh, a little better balance so that in essence we're feeding our own quite frankly because the, uh, a lot of times that feed is, is corn or whatever that's raised right here in Missouri and sent out there to do it so it becomes a situation in which we can strengthen this economy so the director and I are putting together uh, some of the leading national and international experts and a lot of stakeholders here in Missouri on January 5th. Uh, the University of Missouri, which has done a tremendous amount of work in this area, is hosting us. Uh, and we're going to take a day and we're going to try to work through this and see if there are some paths forward so that this over billion dollars that other people are getting in essence as profit for something we start here, whether there are some ways that we can do a better job at getting a path towards getting more of that uh, value here. So, so finish more, uh, you know, harvest more, and then try to brand that both genetically as well as in processes. Uh, and we've already started some of that, um, but uh, we're trying to get a comprehensive strategy for the long run uh, and in essence keep that over a billion dollars uh, in, in uh, additional value here in our state. Let me turn it over to Richard first, then we'll go around the table and ask everybody, kind of, whoa, what you doing? Um, go ahead, I'm, I'm breaking chairs. <laughs> uh, well, um, Thank you, Governor. And the Governor, you know, he hit, hit right on the topic that, that we want to talk about. And when I came in earlier and, and visited with you just a minute about, you know, re retaining value in our, in our rural communities here in Missouri, um, you know, you all, no pressure on you, but you all are, are the next generation in the leadership in agriculture. Um, you know, your advisors do a great job of, of getting you ready, your parents um, of, of doing those kind of things. We, we also view this as an economic, um, economic uh, development vehicle um, for, our, for our smaller communities, rural communities in Missouri. 
it's it's difficult. The governor said a number of times it's difficult to if you're not in the if you're not in the business it's difficult to start on a grain farm and buy a four hundred thousand dollar combine and buy a thousand acres and and all the capital that's required. We think there's a there's a place there's a there's a there's a space to play in in the beef uh, in the beef industry that younger folks can take advantage of um, that would, that will keep more young people on the farm, which in turn keeps more young people in our rural communities uh, across Missouri. Uh, we think it's a we think it's a great opportunity. Um, as the governor said, we're here talking to Centralia FFA. You are are the future of agriculture here in the state. Uh, future of the number one industry in this state, and so it's important that it's important that you understand kind of kind of what our thought processes are and the things that we're trying to think about um, is uh, when we th when we think about you know putting more energy into agriculture, um, and so I think at this you know at, at this juncture our conversation is around beef and how young folks can can become engaged in that um, and, and provide additional opportunities. So. But once again, they're constantly looking for ways to value add both the value of the property, value the economic proposition that's there, and what that does is it it, it strengthens uh, rural communities because uh, we've seen obviously an erosion of population in some rural areas of the state, but we have not seen an erosion of property values. So when you think about business-wise, property values in the agriculture sector have stayed strong. Quite frankly, some would argue um, have have exceeded what what they should be in some in some part of the state relative. Uh, to, to what the, uh, what the what the business model is, and that's a good sign. And now you want to make sure that you're you're getting the value off that. Uh, what I'd like to do, if I could, I'll, I'll uh, go around and if you introduce yourself, tell me what year in school you are, uh, talk a little about what you do. If we get around everybody to do that, then you can feel free to, to ask me hard questions. And if they're really hard, I'll turn it to Richard and maybe we'll do we we this. But I'll start with uh, with, uh, with the president. Um, my name is Sam Sedbox, treasurer and Fed president, and um, uh, I just, uh, that, that's a hard question. Um, that's why you're president. I, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I definitely know that we have some uh, cattle ourselves, and uh, I mean, I do, I can see that it's also kind of hard to get into the cattle industry um, with now buying heifers at Twenty three hundred dollars a piece, um, but I think that also with the that low cost of grain that we've got going on, then I think that's going to help uh, with the cattle industry, and I think it'll help create a good partnership with the cattlemen and the grain. Yeah. What as far as your FFA chapter here, what kind of things you guys are working? On? What are you working on here? What other types of things other than other than what the, the director and I talked about? Um, well, we are working on, well, we just finished up a food drive, um, and we are also working on our new community, community type service project, uh, where we are going to, uh, do a drinking cup for each of the kids, and so then, um, of course that ink's going to be used by, uh, it will be printed on soy ink, um, but then that way, then uh, that's reducing the amount of landfills that we're going to have with the plastic water bottles. It's more demand for soy. <laughs> 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 All right, Dakota, uh, what, what you're the treasurer. What year in school are you? I'm a senior. Okay. Where are you going to school when you graduate? Uh, I plan on going to a, a raw s &T to be an engineer. Really? What kind of engineer? Uh, I'm thinking metallurgical. Metals. The, uh, Tell the story a lot of times. I, I spoke to graduation down there. They had 696 graduates. Everyone I made either a job or a job offer on graduation day. So uh, uh, keep going. What What are you? Um, uh, any comments or questions you'd have about the thing that the, the director and I just talked about? Okay. Liz. Um, I'm Liz Gilbert. I'm a Citroen reporter, and I am a senior in high school. What do you do when you graduate? I'm going to go to Columbia College. We can study. I'm going to get my master's in psychology and my minor in education. Um, I'll be careful what I say. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Nanny Flake. I'm the chaplain. <clears throat> what year of school are you? I'm a senior also. And what are you going to do when you graduate? I'm going to attend Missouri State University down in Springfield with a major in animal science with an emphasis in pre-med. So how does this beef initiative sound to you then? Yeah. <laughs> I just think 
sheep is important to like smaller towns because a lot of Centralia is like farming. So just smaller towns is definitely more important. Yeah, I mean the average beef operation in Missouri has 38, 38 head. You know, so it's a really, it's kind of like when you look at the economy of the state. I mean, so many people when they look at farming think about it as this big business, you know, combines and thousands of acres and all these commodities and whatnot. Beef is the one piece of it that's like, for most people, it's, it's the equivalent of a small business. Um, and so trying to put some business principles uh, directly on that and, and, and shine a light on it, we, we think it can have a, a significant effect, I think, especially in small communities. But it's, it is, a, when you think of a herd of 1.7 million, the average size being 38, uh, that's a whole lot of, and uh, I don't mean to, I know the prices are, are, are where they are, but that's a relatively, in the business world we're in, a relatively uh, uh, small small business. All right. um, my name is Emily Angel. I'm a junior and I'm the FFA historian. The, uh, where are you going to school? Um, I'm planning on either going to Missouri s and or Truman State. What is to? What's that? Probably Justin's niece. I was going to ask if you're in the cattle. Are you in the cattle business? Uh, yes, I just started with my um, first group of cattle. I have 51 head right now, and um, all my family has been in the cattle industry for generations. Which, I mean, it's it's a big deal for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of the challenges to what Director Fordyce and I are talking about when you look at trying to increase the value proposition uh, overall? to get, get more of that value that's being, in essence, harvested, shall we say, in one fashion or another, or branded uh, in other places. What, what, what do you see as the challenges there? Um, when you say harvested, like the profit is harvested, are you talking about how, when, um, like us sending our cattle? Uh, Colorado or to, to, to go through, a, process, to go through a processing facility. And I think it would be better if we processed and grew our beef in Missouri for the Missouri economy. Um, but I also think it's harder for right now for the cow farmers to um, to do that because, as far as I know, we don't really have a facility like a like when we grow our cattle, we send them to um, yeah, we send them to Kansas to beef land to to the feedlots and. Um, as far as I know, in Missouri, uh, we don't have like a like a feedlot um, type of facility where it's just I, w I don't want to say mass production, but where it's cheaper and more uh, uh, producer fin producer friendly. Um, so if we had something like that, I think it would help a lot. So if so if we had if we had uh, opportunities for folks to feed cattle to get them to finished weight. And then we also had a facility that would that would do the, do the processing. What do you think about that that scenario? Um, I think if it was comparable in cost to the other facilities, I think that would work <coughs> a lot better. So you're not committing just... Angel cattle to this uh, <laughs> <laughs> to this proposed feedlot yet. Um, well, that was a loaded question. The, I'm sorry. The business side first, um, but I think if we did have something like that, it would be definitely in consideration because. Not only with the price um, of the like producing the cattle, you also have to consider like the shipping and the trucking out to those places where we're sending our cattle. Yeah, just on that side, uh, most of the numbers show it was about eight percent between shrinkage and, and transportation costs just moving. I mean, and if you had something closer, you can eat into that percent pretty quickly because while, while while fuel is at a relatively low cost here over the last five to ten years, that's going to continue to move up and down as transportation costs are. Super uh, plus, being able to back feed ourselves with corn that we raise here in the state is another way to keep the, the if, as long as you can keep the, 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 for corn, have a number of opportunities so that farmers have a choice between, you know, meeting an ethanol quota, meeting a, meeting a feed quota, or pushing, or pushing it on the international market. If you give farmers more choices in that regard, then they can make an economic decision themselves. Um, so, I mean, that's the thought behind it. We're, it's. Uh, What are you going to study at S&T or Truman? Um, uh, if I do choose to go to S&T, I want to become the either like an chemical or a nuclear engineer, and if I go to Truman, a physical or a physics or mathematics teacher. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, going to leave it. 
cattle business behind. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Uh, my name is Scott Stone. I'm one of the ag teachers here. Um, and I know we're kind of pressed for time, so I'll kind of keep it short. But as you can see from this side of the room, and I tell my student, my freshman every year, 2% of our population is involved in production ag. So realizing that a lot of these youngsters are not going to go into production ag, my goal is that if we can get them involved in ag in some small way, so if they have 5, 10 acres and they feed out two or three steers a year, just for themselves and you know to sell to other people in the community, I think that's a step in the right direction because that you know it may be 15, 20 head of cattle, but those cattle that are not going out of state to be processed. And the value stays here too. All right, Lori. I'm Lori Lewis. I'm one of the ag teachers here too. Um, kind of piggyback on what he said. Uh, I work with the adults here, um, the, young, the young farmers, and we don't have very many young members at all anymore. They're not really mm -hmm. young farmers, and it's really kind of depressing to look into the, you know the brown who we see and people leave. And so any way to get these people back and involved, I think it's a great opportunity. So I think this would be a good way. It's more affordable and some way to get them back into agriculture. Yeah, like you say, there's lots of spinoffs on this, uh, and especially on the value stuff on agriculture as well as genetics. Uh, there are just incredible opportunities, but the, the youth is, is, is exceptionally important and it's one of the one of the key prongs of what the director's working on. Yeah, Phil. Uh, Phil Neely, the other the third agro uh, teacher. Um, I, when you're talking about it, I remember back with my SE, um, I raised bottle calves, and I did the exact same thing. They got shipped off, went to the stockyards, they ended up in Kansas, and I'm thinking, well, that's my leave in the state of Missouri. And I, hearing that, you know, the age I am now, it's like, wow, why didn't we think of this earlier back when I was in high school? So Yeah, you can analogize it in a lot of products. I mean, and I, and I know we got to go because you guys got to get the school over, and I, mean, I want to hear from you all, but whether it's, it's the example I gave you, the simplistic example on corn, are a stronger example where you look at, at, at auto manufacturing. I mean, we've had two significant investments in Missouri by original manufacturers, Ford and GM. One's a billion dollar factory in Kansas City, has a $500 million factory in St. Louis. Um, those have yielded 13 parts plants that we've built in Missouri since those two came in. So once you build this value chain, then there's value all the way along it. You know, it's not just the the, the one cow at the end, and then plus, if you can get as if you can begin to get folks into agriculture as a value adder to their already existing uh, income level, whether a teacher or a, or a, a cop or, or whatever, and, but they're in a, in a rural or, or, or relatively rural community, um, then you not only touch the you, you you get more economic power, but you also keep these small town rural kind of lifestyle that's the backbone of kind of Missouri. Yeah, Nick here. Um, I'm Nick Miller. I am the uh, Sentinel, John C. Where are you going to school? I plan on attending the University of Missouri, uh, majoring or getting my degree in uh, public sci or health science, and then attending med school. What, where, then what, are you, what is going to be your specialty after you get out of med school and finish um, your residencies? Or what, what uh, early, driven dude here, man. He's got, yeah. he's got an on. Yeah, early surgery. Surgery. Stay, stay as focused as you are, and sometimes I might open my eyes and look up at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Sydney Olson. Um, I'm the chapter secretary, and I'm a student. Okay. Yeah. Where are you going to school? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go, Kelsey. I am Kelsey Grimms. I am the Central Iowa State Student Vice President, and I'm a senior. What are you going to do when you graduate? I'm going to go to Missouri State, and I'm going to study ag ed. It is. It's, it, it's, an, it's an awesome program, but I just noticed we have one Mizzou intended uh, attendee. Um, and I guess if it's just down the road, I mean, see, I'm from northwest Missouri, so we're three hours from Columbia. So, yeah. you know, that's a big deal to go to Mizzou if you're from northwest Missouri. So I guess it's not as big a deal if it's just down the road. So. Well, my parents are moving too, so. Oh. Moving oh. All right. <laughs> I miss you too. All right, Austin. Okay. I'm Austin Stanton. I'm a senior. I'm the vice president. I plan on going to Mizzou for agribusiness and then coming back to the farm and also with our business. And what I see the big issue, we need to get processing plants in the state. And I think a big thing we need to do with processing is like do a cooperative because then people will be driven to go there because they'll get to pay back instead of just going to a plant where it's where someone else is making the money, then they're making like money whenever the company's making money. Yeah, I mean it's uh and I know we got to go because I just got an assembly here and somebody's speaking to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it. 
that's one of the options you have. If you look back at the at the history, one of the one of the historical pieces of the of the biofuels. I mean, the significant portion of the ethanol plants are co-ops, not not not. While well, there's a lot of technology from from folks outside the state, the majority of those continue to be run. Uh, Director Fordyce has been very involved uh, both here nationally and internationally on biodiesel under that same theory. I mean, Richard, anything you'd like to say about that? That's yeah. one of the concepts we're looking at. That, that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what I was going to say. That's exactly one of the one of the business models that we would look at as an option for you know the processing facilities and even the even the finishing uh, you know, the feedlot uh, concept. Because I think if you have if you have producer buy-in, not only buy-in as in dollars buy-in, but buy-in as being committed to to staying in for the long haul, I think you I think you're kind of set up for more more likely success. So certainly that's one of the one of the options that we're that we'll look at. Um, the uh, we're gonna have to go. I, I will just tell you that um, you know FFA continues to grow in the state, both grows and growing in numbers as well as in the, the importance. Um, and, and I just appreciate and I know the director does uh, the, the line of folks we've got coming and we're just trying to with your all's help and a lot of other people's help try to define a myriad of, of different careers that touch directly the land and how we feed will flow the world from the heartland here and the, the states that, that figure this out more quickly than others will see significant economic benefit greater economic